Hi everyone, in this RP tutorial video, I'm going to talk about coding standard and best practices of automation anyway. So here I will show you some points which you need to follow while developing the bot. And you know, I will show you a, a sample code where I have tried to use most of the best practices and the coding standard. One more thing here, guys, I want to tell you is like, you know, those who are very new to this channel, I would request you to kindly refer to my other RP related videos. If you're interested to learn RP, you can refer to those videos and you can uh, learn RP by seeing those videos. So let me go to the next slide. So I have noted down some uh, points which I want to uh, show you here. So you have to follow certain certain rules and regulations and the best practices while developing any bot. So make sure your auto login information has been updated in Automation Anywhere client. So reason behind it is, let's say you have scheduled a bot and after, due to some reason, if your system is getting locked and you have not updated this information called auto login, then your bot won't be able to perform your task. So advantage of using this auto login feature is if your system is locked, the so bot will log in using your credential and after performing the required action, it will again lock your computer, okay? And the another point is like, you know, you have to uh, update the email settings in Automation Anywhere client. So email setting is nothing but you have to put the host name, port number, and your user ID and password in case if you want to add. And these things also you can update into Automation Anywhere client. If you go to Automation Anywhere client, there you can see in options. So within options, you will get these options, right? So now another uh, part is like, you know, make sure your zoom percentage is 100% for the browser which you are using to work with Automation Anywhere, let's say Internet Explorer or Google Chrome. If it is not 100%, then your bot might fail. So make sure you are checking this percentage before uh, starting the development. And another thing is like you have to put the proper comment in each and every step. So the advantage of putting proper comment is, so let's say you have developed your code which moved to production or any other environment. So anyone wants to understand about your code or if anyone is doing debugging or making some changes. So your comment will help that uh, you know developer or the support team member to understand about your code. So make sure you are putting correct code so other people can understand with the help of your command, I mean comments, okay? Try to not to use any hard-coded values. Let's say you are, you are automating anything where you have to read input file from a path, right? Or if, if, you, if you are putting any email address, hard-coded or file names. So the problem with, you know, if you are putting anything hard-coded, so you have to make changes in the code. So, so in this type of scenario, what you have to do, you have to put this information into a configuration file and read it from there. So if you add this information in configuration file, so any of the developer or any of the team member from the business team, if they wants to make any changes, let's say if they wants to update or remove any email ID, so they can make the changes into the configuration file. So no need to make any changes in the code, right? And variable name should always start with a small v followed by the variable name. You can see here I have given a two example of variable name is like v name, v location, etc., etc. Okay, another important point with the object cloning commands. So make sure while using object cloning command, you have to make the necessary changes in the property section. So like, let's say if you think your path or domix path or inner text is getting changed all the times and that you are keeping as a matching criteria. So make sure you are using wildcard or you are making proper changes or you are removing or adding, adding properties which will you know help you to get more success rate. So that is depending on you based on your you know past experience with object cloning or that application you can understand which part of the property is getting changed and you can work work for uh, the, the dynamic values and you can uh, move to the next step. Okay, another thing is here like while reading any input file or any let's say Excel file for uh, you know performing any action to the bot, make sure you are building a logic to check input file. So let's say you have to write a code like if file exists, then my bot will go to the next step. If it will not exist, 
it will stop the task and it will send the email notification to the user because your entire code is depending on this input file if this is not available then you if your board go to next step it will be again you know unnecessary to create an error and to check the you know extension and the file name must use uh, you know system variable called like the file name and the extension so reason behind it is let's say your file name is getting changed for example your file name is uh, let me show one small example so this is the excel let's say this is the excel you can see here the excel name is having bought input bought data followed by the date and the excel so this date will always change let's say tomorrow once i once i go to the folder this this uh, input data will be there but the date will be changing right so so in that this this type of scenario make sure you are using a proper logic to read excel name and the extension use wildcard uh, wherever is needed especially when you are working with uh, like you know keystrokes or maximize window minimize window so try to use wildcard along with the name of your window okay so so make sure you are keeping some part of the window which you think which will be always common and apart from that let's say in this particular excel input excel example so as i said like you know date is getting changed always so what i can do i can use a wildcard here i will put a window name as input data after that i will use as tick symbol which will work as a wildcard right another thing is like you know instead of using uh, wait for instead of using a delay we can uh, it's it's recommended or it's a best practice to use uh, change wait for screen change or wait for the window change so the advantage of using this command is let's say you don't know how long it is taking to uh, change the window sometime it is taking 10 seconds some, sometime it is taking 20 seconds so let's say if you are putting a delay like uh, i can say like you know 5 seconds or 20 seconds so if your criteria is not uh, matching then your bot will fail so based on your experience let's say you are running a code 10 times 20 times so you can understand okay this is the maximum time bot is taking to go to the next step so that time you can use the wait for screen change or wait for window change and put the maximum delay so as soon as your uh, you know screen change will happen bot will go to next step it will not open for uh, it will not wait for uh, you know time till your uh, delay let's say if you are giving a 50 seconds of delay so it will not wait till 50 seconds if your criteria is fulfilling before 50 seconds so this is the like you know i have tried to cover this important information under best press practices and the coding standard so let me go to automation anywhere i have created a simple simple code which i want to show you here and in case if you want i can share this code also so you can see here i have updated the a proper comment here like who is the developer date and the other information like project name etc etc and here i am using the error handling to uh, track the other details like you know take the snapshot or send the email in case if any error is happening i am creating folder okay so basically i have built a logic here so which will perform the validations before going to next step okay so one more thing is like you know uh, after your folder structure part is completed make sure you are you this is like you know master bot only within master bot i'm calling different different subtasks so another thing which i wanted to tell you here is like make sure you are doing all the login let's say you are logged into sap or logged into any other applications those things you are doing in the starting of your code in the master bot so you can see here here i'm using sap subtask to logged into the sap so this is the basically a sap bot which i have created which will logged into the sap system okay and i'm using also here uh you know log to command for each and every step to track the log which will be very informative and helpful for us to do the analysis okay, okay. so here is the code which i was telling for the input file so you can see here i'm using here a loop each file in a folder and you can see in my code i am not hard i have not hard coded any information so i am passing these variables to read the folder all right so here i am using you know if file exists if my input file is there then if if it is not there then bot will stop the task and it will send the email if it is there then it will open and it will do the other activities 
So, so similarly, you can see here I have added, I have tried to add most of the information. Don't put any message box in case if you are putting any message box. Make sure this option is checked. Otherwise, you know your bot will stop to you know click on OK. Okay. Here you can see another task I'm calling and end of the error handling. So this is all about you know coding standard and the best practices. So so this is like you know I have tried to cover only uh, you know important information here. So it is not uh, specific to uh, this whatever I have mentioned. It it might change. It is depending on the scenario or it is depending on the your experience what type of scenario you are facing based on that also your uh, these things will change so this is all from today's video and one more thing i want to tell you i hope you like this video and you will be able to understand about automation anywhere based practices and coding standard and i would request you to kindly like this video and share with other uh, people also and don't forget to subscribe my channel and please put your comments and suggestion in case if you have anything so your comment and suggestion will be highly appreciated and and also like if you have any special request to the rpa video i would request you to post in a comment section i would be happy to work on that and I'll upload those video in uh, my channel thank you so much for watching this video